prayer. Recording in progress. Aindu karatthanai, anai mukhatthanai, indin ilampirai, polum yehitthanai, nandi mahantanai, jnana kolundinai, kundi ilvai thadi, pottu hindene, tandai thayavanum, சார்கதீங்காவானும் அந்தமிலா இன்பன் நமக்காவானும் எந்த மது ஊனாகுவானும் உயிராகுவானும் அருட்கோனாகுவானும் குரு நன்மையும் செல்வமும் நாளும் நல்குமே திண்மையும் பாவமும் சிதைந்து தேயுமே ஜென்மமும் மரணமும் இந்தி தீருமே இம்மையே ராம என்றிரண்டெழுத்தினார் ஹரிஓம் ராமா ஃப்ரம் அயோத்தியா ரீச்சுடு சித்திரக்கூட்டா And as it was near Ayodhya, so at their will, anybody can come and disturb. So Rama want to change his place. And uh, Rishi is there also, we are changing their place. due to fear of rakshasas then rama came to sarabanga rishi he guided to sudikshna rishi and he was there about 10 years then he wanted to get blessings of Agastya Rishi. Then he asked Sudhikshna Rishi the direction. Then he directed him towards the south. But it is not the south we think. Podihai, Kuchalam, almost to the end of the south India. Generally we think Agastya Rishi is living there. But in case of uh, this South, it is not that South. <laughs> I see some lag in the video, hope it recovers. because the panchavati was the place asked by agastya for rama to live in and that is south to agastya sarshram the panchavati they say nashik panchavati nearby nashik nashik means where we print our coins notes uh, in india indian rupees were printed somewhere uh, near ujjain that is central bharat and uh, one more clue we get that near by panchavati the godavari river is flowing so at that time when ramayana was happening agastya sarsham was somewhere near central asia near panchavati near godavari river so we we should not be misled by the agastya word that he was living in the banks of thamrabrani where kuchalam is there in the deep south it is not so 
then we saw he met Jatayu there. Kashyapa Maharishi. had 13 wives, daughters of Daksha Prajapati. So one is Diti, her sons are called, I'm sorry, first one is Aditi, her children are called Adityas, or they otherwise known as Devas. Another one is called Diti, her sons are called Daityas. If they are not behaved well, then they are known as Rakshasas. Another one is called Danu. Her children are called Danavas. If they didn't behave, then they are called Daityas. Among them, one is Manu. In Ramayana, it is told, Manu gave birth to men. And among them, one is called Vinata, the grand daughter of Sukhi, the daughter of Tamra. In the Aditi, Diti, Danu line of order, one is called Tamra. Her daughter, he ha she had five daughters, one is called Sukhi. Suki's granddaughter is called Vinata. Garuda and Aruna were two sons of Vinata. And Sampati and Jatayu are son of Aruna and Sheni. When they came to know Jatayu was the friend of Dasharatha, then Dashara, Jatayu was considered as the father figure and the, the protecting Sita was given to, in the absence of Rama and Lakshmana, was given to Jatai. And Lakshmana built a cottage in Panchavati, which is, which is near Godavari River. After some days, there came a Rakshasi called Surpanaka. Surpa means uh, like a pan, in Tamil we say muram, whose nakas, that is uh, nails are very lengthy, like a winnowing pan. So she is called Surpa Nakha. sister of Ravana for whose sake the whole story is built till now. Ravana was son of Vishravas Rishi. The Vishravas Rishi's another son is Kubera. So one mantra says, so Vaishravano Upamo Bhavati. If we chant the stotra, then we will become equal to Kubera. So, because Vaish Vishrava Rishi's son, he is called Vaishravana. Of course, Ramana, Ravana also can be called Vaishravana. So, in that way, Gubera is elder brother to Ravana and in the Sarga 17 Valmiki mentions him as Dashagriva. He had ten heads and in Surpanaka introduces her to Rama Lakshmana when she arrived there. So she says, I am Surpanaka, sister of Ravana, who is son of Vishravas, the lord of Sri Lanka, and Kumbhakarna is 
another brother who is excessive sleepy and vibhishana who is very pious and i have two more brothers kara and dushana they are living here nearby the place which is called janasthana so i was just wandering then i saw you people i came here so here itself rama was in informed that vibhishana was pious according to valmiki ramayana vibhishana was informed to rama that he is pious person unlike the other two brothers ravana and kumbhakarna you have to make note of this point because later rama has to take a decision when vibhishana takes surrender to rama sugriva was deadly against that he is the brother of enemy then hanuman told good words about him and rama went by hanuman possibly the reason is here sister of vibhishana herself was telling he is unlike us he is a very pious person then uh, sarga 18 she asked rama please marry me i will be the good wife for you rama told uh, actually there are places when we should not be sarcastic we should not be playful already rama a story goes like this rama played with caterpillar and the ball hit kuni alis mantara so she sent rama to forest instigating kk here also it happened so it has to happen so adari rama cannot reach sri lanka ravana ravana cannot come into picture so it happened so rama was making fun of her he told see i already have a wife why are you bothering me you please go to lakshmana then uh, when she went to lakshmana then lakshmana told why are you coming to me i am a slave of this person whatever you want to be a slave you better go to him ask him again insist him then surpanaga got wild she thought rama is not accepting her because of the beautiful sita so if he eat her then these people will apply this then she try to catch hold of sita then rama told lakshmana please take care of her then lakshmana lobes the nose and ears of surpanaka she returned to janasthana their place rakshasa's place then narrated everything to khara who is in charge of that place then khara sends 14 rakshasas with her for taking care of rama and lakshmana rama kills the 14 instantly then surpanaka again goes back to khara khara was uh, taunted by surpanaka then khara cut oil then he with his brother dushana and other major generals he marched to as panjavadi with an army of 14000 rakshasas and rama single handedly kills them all rama kills dushana rama kills trishra rama kills khara also by this time ya yeah, rakshasa kada akampana he escaped the battle while the battle was going on he reached sri lanka 
and informed Ravana. The about the power of Rama, he informed. Actually, from this point onwards, Ravana was advised again and again, informed again and again about the power of Rama. So we see Ravana never dared to counter Rama. Rama has to go to Sri Lanka, reach Sri Lanka and counter Ravana. Ravana never ever tried to counter Rama because he was always advised by all the people around him don't take with Rama. So here also Akampana after narrating things he advises he informs him about the Rama's power. He has single-handedly handles them all. And he has a brother also. He is also equally powerful. He didn't come to the picture at all. Without him, he managed us all, 14,000 people and Kara, Dushan, and Rishira, everybody. So, Akampana advises him. His real power is Sita. Over a hundred years, there is a friend. There is a friend. Sita is behind his victory. Because of her, he fights fearlessly, fiercely. So if you take away Sita, then he will broke in his heart. Thereafter, he will not be able to fight. He won't be with Bhutiswadina in his wits to handle things. So the best way to handle him is Take away Sita. Then he will lose all his wit and strength. Then if you want, we can fight with him and uh, defeat him also. Ravana, after hearing the detail about Rama, he didn't say Varanam Purudam Arvum that is I, there were, it, it is considered there were eight elephants holding the earth on eight directions. Ravana, he could not keep himself quiet. He wanted to fight with somebody or other. So he went and fought with these eight elephants. So Varanam Purudamaru. Here Varanam means elephants. Varayinai yedutta thodu. Thinavedutta thodu, they say in Tamil. So his hands were itching to do something, fight with somebody. So after this, he went to Kailash. He wanted to lift Kailash mountain. So he lifted also. Varayinai yedutta thodu. Narada munivar kierpa. Nayam Bada Uretanavum, etc. was his glory. The glorious Ravana didn't take the path of, hey, what are you saying? Is there a person better than me in fighting, powerful than me? I will go and fight with Rama and kill him and take his wife. He didn't say, you know, please notice, you are all else, please notice. He didn't say, I will go and fight with Rama. He just obliged to accompany his idea, stealing Sita. That was the manliness of Ravana. One has to bear in mind. So, he, some Punya was there, his death time not at reach. So he went to Maricha because he was there in India. Ravana was in Sri Lanka, so Maricha knows better about India and things. So he came to Maricha, his uncle, one way, and asked him. Actually, told him that this is my idea to steal Sita, wife of Rama, 
please help me in that because i am not better in stealing so he called asked marisha to accompany him. so akampana told ravana naiva devi na gandharvi na apsara anacha pannagi sita doesn't look like a woman ordinary woman she is not devata not gandharva or apsara or pannagi i make this point because there were the different race existed and akampana was enumerating it doesn't look like she belongs to any of the race available in the earth she looks the di- divine so rama ravana forget about rama in his rama killed his 14000 people and all killed tataka chased away maricha killed subhago everything was not in his mind only sita was in his mind so he came and asked maricha please help me then maricha told him akhyatha kena va sita mitra rupena shatru shatruna which idiot told you acting as to your friend please abduct sita whoever advised to you he is the enemy of you not only you he is the enemy of whole asura race rakshasa kula he is the enemy of whole rakshasa kula please don't go by his advice he is a sin person a true and sin 200 percent idiot don't follow his words i am telling you experienced person i know rama well i have straight encounter with him and through thrown away by him only i am here i was in nearby vishwamitra's place nearby ayodhya but i came to thandaka because of the fight i had with rama in fear of him so don't go by that idiot whoever advised you that he is mitra rupena shatruna he is enemy in the form of friend please don't go by him then uh, ravana got frightened what he told you about rama was true and uh, marija was telling he rama is a sleeping lion he till now he didn't interfere in your life don't awake him to interfere in with your life then your lifetime is over don't do that please go back you have a good city good country many wives please be happy with them don't touch even sita ravana because he is a chicken hearted fellow not originally a fighter so he went back to sri lanka did not take sita gave up the idea when marisha told him please gave up he gave up and went to sri lanka happily then surpanaka came to ravana in the sarga 32 valmiki says vimshad bhujam dashagrivam 20 hands and 10 heads here also the mention comes so she approached ravana who is 10 heads and 20 hands here we have to bear in mind 
Surpanaka's husband was killed by none other than Ravana. Something happened and then he killed a sister's husband. So for a, as a prize chitta, he asked her to live in Janasthana as her country. So when she came from Janasthana and wailed about things, he has to listen to her. In this uh, <clears throat> Sarga 32, some of the glories of Ravana were told. Okay, it is not glories. <laughs> Something about Ravana told. Maybe glory or maybe his vandalism, hooliganism, terrorism also. <coughs> he took away Dakshaka's wife. Dakshaka is one of the Naga. We hear, heard in uh, Mahabharata. Takshaka only bit Parikshit. So Vasuki, Takshaka are all great uh, Nagas, serpents. So he took away Takshaka's wife. He took away Pushpak Vimana from Kubera. His country, Sri Lanka from Kubera. And uh, by the way, Dr. Subramaniam Swami says, there is a place nearby Meerut, which is on the way from Delhi to Rishikesh. There is a city called Meerut. Nearby Meerut, the, there are people, the Ravana's ancestors are living there and they are worshipping Ravana. So there is a birthplace of Ravana, it seems. So it is a tips for tumblers. That is a Ravana's grand, great, great, great grandsons. So they are the one who is spreading the news that Ravana is a great person. Uh, no, no, no. They, they have nothing to do with that. Okay. <laughs> they are happy in North India in their own place. So, Ravana took away Gubera's Pushpaka Vimana and uh, Sri Lanka country also. And uh, other vandalism done by Ravana, brief history of Ravana comes in this chapter, Sarga 32 of Aranyakanda. Ravana did Yajnas. You know, Yajnas means Vaidik, Veda Dharma. Yajna means Samskara. Yajna means Arya. Ravana did. Okay. So, these idiots don't know. These ignorant people don't know. Ravana did Yajnas. This occurs in this chapter. Ravalmiki Rava gives the detail. Then he learned Sanskritam also. Ravana knows Sanskritam. Of course, if one has to learn Veda, then he has to learn Sanskritam. Ravana learned Vedas also. So he knows Sanskritam. After knowing Vedas, only one can do Yajnas. Of course, these are all implications. And uh, Valmiki specifically mentions those things also. And uh, do you know, Ravana worshipped the Aryan gods. That is Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma. From Brahma only he got this boon that he will not be killed by other than human beings. That boon he got from Brahma by worshipping Brahma who is Aryan deity. Aryan God. And uh, he pleased the Aryan gods to get boons. He pleased them with Soma drink, which is Aryan drink. Okay. And uh, he killed the Brahmanas. Being a Brahmin, he himself being a Brahmin, he killed the Brahmanas. He committed rape, murder. In a single word, we can say Ravana is a modern called a terrorist. Because nobody terrorists do, do, do these things. So, 
Ravana is a terrorist. These details we get in this chapter of Valmiki Ramayana. So, uh, Surpanaka scolds Ravana. You are a total waste sitting in Sri Lanka. You don't know what is happening in your country, territory. And she tells the details, of course, in her own way. Surpanaka also instigates Ravana to abduct Sita. We know in our experience, women are enemies to women. Like mother-in-law to daughter-in-law. Even in Bible says, Taikum Mahalakum, Mamiarakum, Marumahalakum, and so on. Jesus says, I came to this earth to create fight between daughter and mother, between mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. I didn't come for peace. I came with sword. To this effect, there is a sentence in Bible. So they are cheating us that he, it is a peaceful religion, but Bible doesn't say that. Okay, leave aside. So here also, Surpanaka was the enemy for Sita. She twists what happened there. And he, she also explains Ravana. What mighty Rama is. And while telling that, she tells he has steel arrows. So people say the Aryan don't know iron, usage of iron. But here uh, Valmiki Ramana says he used steel arrows. Of course, in India we used steel very commonly. In Tamil it is called Uruk. Steel means uh, which won't get uh, rust. In Tamil it is called Uruk. So in uh, Rome, Greek it is called Uruk or Ark. It came, possibly came from Tamil word Uruk. In olden days, in house they said Uruk Petty, which is won't rust but very strong. The swords are made of this Uruk only. A modern English word is steel. So Valmiki here says he used steel arrows. And in this context, she says, you only see that he lifts the bow and you won't see how the arrow comes out. Possibly this Kambaramayanam, Kambanatadwar uses in when Sita was married by breaking the bow. There he says, Kambar says, Kayal yedutthad kandanar, yittad ketanar. They just saw he lift the, lifted the bow. Then they only hear the noise. They don't know what happened. Whether he, he string the, strung the bow or shoot the arrow. Nothing. Nobody knows. They just knew that he lifted the arrow. So sorry, bow. Then they hear the sound. It broke down. So that was his Fast, Surpanaka tells in this context to Rama. So he has a wife, Sita. I thought she will be befitting for you. So I intended to bring Sita for you. In the process, uh, Lakshmana cut my nose and ears. So it is all because of you to do some good to you. I tried but I got like this. So you have to abduct Sita. <clears throat> because she will be bewitching for you. Past Urpanaga, somehow Sita has to leave Rama. So her purpose will be solved. That's it. So she was instigating Ravana to do that. Here you notice, even Surpanaga is not advising 
Ravana to fight with Rama. Because they all knew the power of Rama. Nobody suggesting Rama, but for later Vibhishana and other people. Then uh, Ravana again, Padayakurudi, Kadavattaradi. So again he comes back to Maricha. Maricha again tries to dissuade Ravana. He narrating his own experience, what happened earlier. Then uh, Maricha asked Ravana not to provoke Rama. It is not good for the whole Asura clan. clan. Maricha further narrated his narrow escape for the second encounter in Tantaka forest recently. When uh, Rama came here, uh, he was roaming in the Dandaka forest with other two Rakshasas. Then Rama took three arrows. When Rama took three arrows, Maricha escaped. The other two Rakshasas got killed. So Maricha explained that also. I knew he is here and somehow I escaped this time also. Please don't venture into mist. What did they say? Misdeed. Better you go back to your Sri Lanka. But Rama, Ravana this time he is not ready to listen to Maricha. He orders him you have to help me in his mission. Then Mar Marisha without giving the hope again he tells Ravana, he tried to deter Ravana from his purpose. When uh, Ravana didn't listen, he might have decided that if I didn't obey Ravana, he will kill me. If I go by him, then Rama will kill me. Which is better? Better get killed by a real warrior. Not a person like Ravana who want to abduct Sita. Steal Sita. So, he don't want to get killed by a thief. He want to kill by a real man warrior Rama so he finally decided to go by Ravana's mission he took a form of a deer which is in golden hue and he as he expected Sita was Asking Rama, please get the deer, Rama, and of course Lakshmana was telling Sita, no, this is some Rakshasa, not real deer. So, better, I will go and kill. Ra Lakshmana told, Sita told Rama, no, don't send this person. He is a hasty person. Please, you go and bring it light. Then Rama told, uh, if it is a deer, I will bring it light. If it is not, if the necessary arises, I will kill it. So, Rama goes to hunt the deer at the persistent demand of Sita. And finally, Rama knew the thing and he killed Maricha. While getting killed Maricha, he took Rama a long, to a long distance away from the Panchavati where Rama's ashram was there. Quite a long distance he took away. While dying, he made a cry that Laksh Lakshmana Sita as though he is in a dying condition. Maricha made a cry 
calling Lakshmana and Sita. And this is the uh, important place. I am not dwelling, but uh, just I am telling in one line. Lakshmana told Sita, no, it is uh, not my brother's voice. It may not be my brother's voice. By some mimicry person, it is done. So don't uh, be afraid because my brother is a great warrior. He cannot be killed in such a manner. So, please don't worry about my brother. Uh, and he asked me to protect you, so I will be here. But uh, Sita told some unwarranted things to Lakshmana. So, there was no other way for Lakshmana but to obey Sita. He was not on his own left Sita, but Sita used words like that, so he has to leave. Of course, if Lakshmana didn't leave, the purpose of the avatara won't get fulfilled. So Lakshmana left. Then this great grandfather of Tamilas, Ravana, came in disguise. Okay? India. Vikshu farm. In a mendicant farm, he came. Then he later asked the Viksha to Sita. Then he made her come out of her hut. Then he told, Do you know who I am? I am the great, great Ravana. But Sita was not impressed because if he might have come, and fought with Rama, then he took Sita, then she might have impressed. He came as a thief, and he is asked, telling his power, promise, and trying to impress Sita, but Sita was not impressed by him. So she did, didn't listen to him, but finally he took her in his pushpaka, and Sita realized her mistake, sending Lakshmana and not listening to Rama, not listening to it is not the real deer. And uh, Ravana <clears throat> took away Sita. On the way, Sita saw Jatayu. Jatayu was sleeping there, then she yelled at Jatayu. Then Jatayu woke up and he tried to deter Ravana from his evil design. Ravana killed Jatayu. After a huge fight, Ravana fell on the ground, lost his bow. Finally, he had only a sword, which was given by Lord Shiva. Varanam Purida Marum, Varene Edita Dodum, Nara the Munivar Kirpan, Ayambada Uritanam, Tarani Mauli Patum, Shankaran Kodutta Vadum. Sword given by Lord Shiva. With that sword, he cut the wings of Jatayu, he could manage to cut and cause wounds also, severe wounds, because Jatayu was uh, even then not giving up, he cut his leg, whatever he could, he cut, then he took Sita away. On the way, Sita threw her jewels, when she saw some five monkeys were sitting around. <coughs> so she threw her jewels among the monkeys. Then Ravana reached Sri Lanka. First he took her to his gymnasium, Antapura, and he showed how wealthy he is. 
how many workers he has how everybody is afraid of him and so on but nothing impressed sita so he tried to convince her by giving her a logic that there are eight types of marriages suggested in the ved shastras one among them is rakshasa vivaha so one can kidnap a woman and marry also and so on but we have to bear in mind because this tumblers ravana's grandsons may put this argument also so i am telling make this point rakshasa marriage is not for a married woman okay you should not touch another's wife that is the golden rule that's it you should not bring in any other logic to this context piran manai vidaidal in tirukural tiruvalluvar also has a ten verses on this piran manai vidaidal so it is a wrong 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 thing to do panchamaka papa aata thai shat every you list any way papas in all the list this will come touching another's wife taking away another's wife will come so when sita was not listening to him at all he put her in ashoka vatika they say the place is still there in sri lanka it is a tourist place or holy place there even now she he put her there and made some arrangements somehow you brain please brainwash her to marry me so he made all the arrangements for that and sita even didn't look at him yes a a woman should not look at another man with evil eyes so she took a grass blade of grass put in front of her and looking at that grass hey ravana you may consider him you are superior for me you are just a blade of grass nothing for me pullik samanda in tamil we say so with sollava so solli she put the blade of grass in front of her looking at the grass she was telling that one day or other rama will come and will kill you i will wait until that so now we shift the camera to rama lakshmana sent away from panchavati kutia he reached rama rama was also hurrying back and the way they both met then rama scolded at lakshmana possibly this is the only time rama scolded at lakshmana i suppose because of sita lakshmana got scolded from rama for leaving sita unprotected rama scolded him then uh, when rama saw sita was not there in kutia rama lost his mental balance then thambi udayan padai kanja lakshmana came into his rescue and he told good words he solaced him comforted rama don't worry i am with you we will search on all possible places uh, from the signs we can make out we can search in the southward direction so we can move to south he gave the hint and uh, took rama also along and uh, there is some 10 chapters or so how rama wailed about sita's departure sita's departure how much affected rama some 10 chapters goes in that okay 
I am not getting into that. Then uh, they met Jatayu in the Sarga, 67. And uh, Jatayu told them the detail that Ravana came and took her. I tried to stop him, but I could not. Then Rama cremated Jatayu, did all the last rites as one will do for, her, for his father. Rama did everything to Jatayu. Then uh, as he told uh, it is Ravana, the Rakshasa from south, so they moved towards further south. On their way, another one Rakshasi came called Ayomukhi. She saw Lakshmana alone, so she tried to catch hold of him. Then Lakshmana punished, punished her. Then generally you see in when we women are there, they try their best not to kill them, just to do some pain, inflict some pain, so that they run away. When it didn't happen with Tataka, Rama had to kill her. But with Surpanaka, with Ayomiki, they didn't kill her, just terrified them and chased them away. Then uh, there came a Rakshasa called Kabandha. Kabandha is a person who lived near Kroncha forest. They moved from Panchavati to Janasthana, then Kroncha forest. Then they were moving towards Matanka Ashram, Matanka Rishi Ashram. On the way, they, the Kabanda was there and he caught hold of these people. Kabanda is a person, um, he was normal, he was in the lineage of Danu, so he said Danava. He was a normal person, very pleasing look person. He did tapas towards Brahma and he got some boons. That is long life he got from him. Then it got into his get, head. Then he decided to fight with Indra. He went and fought with Indra. Indra with his Vajrayam, that is thunder, thunderbolt they say in English translation. In Tamil it Samskara, it is called Vajrayam. So with, with his Vajrayam, he stuck him. So his head went inside, head and neck went inside the trunk. His leg also went inside the trunk. So then uh, Kabanda pleaded Indra, how can I live like this? Please uh, help me. Then uh, Indra made some arrangements, so he made his hands lengthy around 8 miles. With your length, you can bring the food near you and your mouth, mouth will be in your belly, your forehead will be in your chest and one eye will, will be there. In the chest there will be one eye. So in that, that way, Indra made some arrangement for him to live. And when uh, Rama and Lakshmana comes and cuts your hand, uh, you will be freed. In between, uh, also he meddled with a Rishi called Sthula Shira. He also cursed him, you be ever in this form. Then he asked for pardon. Then uh, he, uh, the Rishi also told him, when Rama and Lakshmana comes and cut your hair, hands and cremates you, then you will retain your old form, regain your old form. Then uh, Rama and Lakshmana cut his 
hands then kabanda asked him please cremate me also if you people cremate me i will get my older farm then i i will be able to help you in your mission then they did the same then kabanda counsels them to make an alliance with sugriva who is near pamba lake uh, kishkin rishyamukha parvata somewhere around matanga vana forest where matanga rishi was living and uh, he told this is the way you go you will reach pamba there will be a female attendant of matanga rishi called sabari she is waiting there for you after seeing you she will go to brahmaloka all other matanga rishi and his other disciples all already went she is told to wait there to see you so she is waiting there you please go and see her <coughs> near by that there is rishyamukha parvata and you will see sugriva there and uh, here we have to bear in mind kishkinda is con- uh, sorry Kish- kishkinda of course is considered somewhere in karnataka the person pamba Pum- river related with sabarimala is in kerala so possibly the kerala that pamba is river in karnataka the pamba where sabari was living possibly a lake so the both may, should be different places we can guess so rama came and saw sabari and uh, she asked rama to make fire fire of fire and she gave her in the fire after seeing rama so this is another incident where sabari also got to do the fire she had i so i told you other day once the life purpose is over the jnanis sanyasis have the right it is not considered as suicide suicide is when you without finishing your task of knowing brahman you finish your life once you know brahman you lived your life to the completeness you used the your body for the purpose which for which it was given then you are free to give up your body some people may give up their body in the water some people may give up in the forest some people may give up uh, by restraining their breath some people may give up in the fire so here we see sabari gave up her body in the fire then she ascends to brahmaloka so with this uh, aranya kantam completes Swami, okay. Sabari on her own, she doesn't uh, stay back to uh, see Rama. Or is it some, they told her to stay then? Yeah, when the uh, disciples were uh, about to leave, she also wanted to leave along with them. Then they told her, so you please be here. Rama, she, uh, when Rama reached Dantaka, sorry, Chitrakuta, then itself, the, the people in Pamba knew Rama reached Chitrakuta. so sabari was telling in this context i i was told that you reached chitrakuta by disciples of matanga rishi and they asked me to be here till you come so i am here so this is the statement comes in uh, sarga 73 of valmiki ramayana or 74 in this context Yeah. When compared to others, 
Madhakarishi already went. Then their disciples also went. When she also wanted to go along with them, they asked her to stay back until Rama comes. Uh, so we don't see much uh, detail in this uh, Sargas 73 74 about the Sabari. Bhakti of Sabari, I can say. Or I didn't go read in uh, such detail. I didn't see much detail. It is my fault maybe also. But there are a lot of stories about Sabari. <laughs> but there are a lot of stories. They say she was Yalanda Payam. Bad, badari fruits in some scripture it is called badari fruits she the daily she used to pick up fruits rama will come today rama will come today every day she keeps fruits for rama which was available in her place so when rama came she was uh, eating the fruit and tasting it if it is good then she was offering to rama if it is not good then she was not giving to rama so rama was also taking that as a devotee's prasadam so like that there is story also then uh, for his divineness there was a pond with lot of uh, chinese viruses <laughs> just to, so when uh, sabari entered the pond it became clean like that another story also is there so this are all something about extra about sabari but which i didn't come across in valmiki ramayana maybe in some other ramayana such stories may occur we in compulsory uh, in this way i didn't re- i am not reading kampa ramayana because i am not telling in tamil if i was telling in tamil i might have read kampa ramayana so, and there are ananda ramayana dulasi ramayana generally dulasi ramayana is more devotional so possibly such things may occur in there. and uh, when uh, lakshmana leaves sita he put a line called lakshman rekha and so on that occurs only in ananda ramayana oh valmiki doesn't write it no no in not in valmiki even in dulasi but only in ananda oh. ramayana they say the lakshman uh, rekha story you know what in the big part and uh, swami they have but uh, in uh, i have heard that uh, when ravana came to uh, sita's place right before uh, uh, abducted her avaru vande ore samiyar veshathile vandanga not on the ravana vesham yeah, yeah I, i told today also in a bhikshu yeah the bhikshu i told oh, okay okay bhikshu means uh, yes sanyas uh, the other day i told it very clearly people who want to cheat others they <laughs> take sadhu swar i don't know whether in your class or other class because i am taking many class but i told the uh, uh, ravana also came in sa- sadhu sanyasi atthar in the guise of uh, sadhu only he came to ask for bhiksha because sadhu came it is a, a, a grahastha's duties to served him so sita was serving him he may took that chance to abduct her that is true he didn't come as ramana but of course he introduced later in the course of time he introduced him as ravana before taking her away according to valmiki ramayana he introduced him so before taking her away before abducting her prayer thank you so much thank you ma om anjile ondu vetan anjile ondai thavi anjile ondaraha aariyakkaga ehi anjile ondu vetta anangai kandayalaroril anjile ondai vetan 
அவன் நம்மை அழித்து காப்பான் ஹரி ஓம் தத் சர்வம் பிரம்மார்ப்பணமஸ்து ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ணார்ப்பணம